So this is day one of the trig unit, and this is the unit circle that I was just talking to you about that may be fortunate for you if that's what you want to think, but in the previous years I would explain how do we get to these measurements, so to, and then how do we easily memorize them. But because of limited time, I'm not going to make you memorize that. I will tell you, so this will be on your quiz, this will be on your test, but I will tell you when we do come across something that you do need to memorize. But let's look at this anyways. I'm going to use a highlighter. If you happen to have one, take it out. It may be helpful. I'm going to highlight this line. Now, this is just an Ann Bradley term. It's not a technical term. I call this the starting line. I found out that when I started to, uh, in periods two and three, when I started referring to this as like a track, it made more sense. Maybe that's why first hour students were a little, a little more confused. Think of this as a track. Is there any limitations on a track outside? How many times you can run around it? No. Other than when your body right collapses, right? There's no limitations how far. For those that have been in track or watched a track meet, do we always run the same direction around the track during a meet? Yes, right? We always run one direction around it. Now, if we're just practicing or you're just out there, can you run either direction around it? Okay, so there's one way that we run around this, and that's going upward. So it's counterclockwise. This is when we say we have positive angles, as when we go upwards. That's the general way we do things. Just like a track, we have one way we run around the track. Now, that doesn't mean we can't run the other way. So if we choose to run the other way, though, we need to have a way that denotes it so we know we're going in the opposite direction. Guess how we do that? Negative. So if you see a positive measurement, means we went upward to get to that. If you see a negative, we went downwards to get it. Now these measurements, or these numbers, are all measurements. The first one is going to be a degree measurement. The second one is going to be a radian measurement. So there's degree measurements, and there is radian measurements. And they are equivalent. And one of the learning objectives from today, we'll learn how to go from degrees to radians, and radians back to degrees. Um, so when I say to you 45 degrees, and I said, what is equivalent to 45 degrees? You could tell me pi over 4. Or what's equivalent to 90 degrees? You could say pi divided by 2. So it's kind of like going from Fahrenheit to Celsius or uh, miles to kilometers. And they all are going to describe your interior angle here of the circle. They, these are all measurements of interior angles. And in this case, they all represent going in the positive direction. They don't represent going in the negative direction, but we can use them to assist us in getting that answer. This again is an Ann Bradley thing. I'm going to highlight what I call the 30 degree measurements. Do you agree that you can see what we call four sectors here, four large pieces of pizza? Do you guys see those? Yes? Okay, each one of the four slices of pizza is going to be cut equally in half. Watch. I take this large slice and I cut it equally in half. How do I know that's equally in half? Because this is 90 degrees. And half of 90 is? So I call these the 45s. They equally cut those four large sectors. A sector is like a pizza, a piece of pizza. They equally cut them in half. So now, actually, how many pieces of pizza do I have that are equal? Eight. eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's eight. And for some people that are like, I'm not seeing where she's getting this, this is your quadrant one, okay? It's like in your first quadrant. It's like your first sector there. And I'm just doing this so you guys can see this. Here's like my second quadrant. Um, here's, <laughs> trying to think what I can do here. Here's my third quadrant. And here is my fourth quadrant, okay? So four different quadrants. Now, there's also something that represents a 30 degree measurement. So think of quadrant one. If I said you have one large piece of pizza called a sector, and you need to take that large piece of pizza, and you need to cut it up for your little siblings who are three and four years old into three equal parts. So here's your large piece of pizza. You need to cut, cut up in equal parts. So you cut it right here and right here. Now this, this slice of pizza has three equal parts. Do you see the three equal parts? And how we do that is we take 90 degrees, we cut it into three to make it 30, 60, and... 90. So there's 30, 60, 90. We're going to cut each one of these into three equal parts. Three equal parts and likewise. Keep in mind that this is, this is my starting point. Always, always, always. 
Okay, so the very first learning objective says, let me grab this piece so I can go to the top. It says, draw an angle with the given measurement and then state which quadrant does the terminal side light in. So we're gonna go 300. So bring this up here. Remember in years past, kids would have to go, okay, where's 300? Okay, where do I find that? But you guys are a little bit lucky in right now in terms of memorizing things. So find 300 degrees, please, and put your finger or pencil, pencil on it, please. So 300 degrees is right here, correct? Mm -hmm. Now we need to draw accurate measurements. Do you see how that's on one of those 30 degree measurements? Mm -hmm. Which quadrant is it in? That's easy, so let's get that first part done. I like to abbreviate, let's go quad four. That's the Roman numerals for it. I don't care if you put a number four. So I know it's in quadrant four and I know it lies on one of those 30 degree measurements. So here's how what I like to do. Okay, think of this as the circle. I need to cut this into three equal parts. So I'm gonna make two slices. So there'd be one slice and two slices. Okay, now out of those two slices, is it, is it the one further below or the one up above that represents the 300? It's down below, right? Okay, so here's how we do this. Down below, you're gonna make a line with an arrow. Go to the starting point, and you're gonna do not a complete revolution. You're gonna start, a revolution means you're going around it. You're gonna go around it until you hit that line and you're gonna stop. I'm going around it, going around it, going around it, and stop. That represents 300 degrees. Review from geometry, remember a complete circle is 360, and you can see that on your circle right here. We're gonna go to number two, 45 degrees. So go back to your circle. What quadrant is 45 degrees in? So quadrant one. Now this is a fairly easy one because what does it do to quadrant one? Splits it in half, nice. So I'm gonna go right in between these two, these two here, I'm gonna cut it in half, and then I'm gonna go up, make that line with an arrow from the inside of the circle, and I go up to it. Done. What's difficult about number three is 450 cannot be seen on this unit circle. Remember, there's no limit how many times you can run around the track or you can go around the unit circle. So it doesn't stop when you get to 360. You can go 360, 720. You can continue, continue to add revolutions. So 360, or sorry, 450 goes once around the circle and then how many more degrees? So to get that, when this is above 360, we can take that number, subtract 360. If this number is less than 360, we can find our answer. So 450 minus 360 is 90. That means I need to do one revolution, one complete, and an additional 90. Now I can find 90 degrees by looking back at my unit circle. It's right here on top. In fact, it's on this line. So I go one revolution. Now watch how I do this since it will be a little bit different for you. One revolution goes like this. And since we're not done, I don't want to meet back at that exact point at the starting line. I go here, and then I continue to go until I hit that 90 degrees. And there's already a line with an arrow there. This represents 360 plus 90, which is 450. Well, that's a great question. So the question was, um, Sun says, is this in quadrant one or is it in quadrant two? So let's do a raise of hands. Who says, no, I understand it's in quadrant one, hands up high, confident. Who says quadrant two? Who says neither one? The answer is it's in, it's in neither one of the quadrants. Think of this as being at home and having four houses in your room. What would these represent? The walls. The walls. So are you in a room or on a wall when you're in this position? You're on a wall, right? So you're not in any one of the quadrants. The terminal side actually lies on this line, which we would have thought of as like the y-axis. It actually lies on the y-axis. And we're going to refer later on to that as not the y-axis, but it's going to be the sine. We'll have the cosine and the sine, so we'll talk about that at a later time. Okay, negative 30, and this is where it starts to get a little more confusing now. The third thing we're adding into the first learning objective, we see a negative. Remember that all of these measurements of an angle represent when you go upwards. So it says negative 30. So here's how I first teach this. I go, okay, well, where's positive 30? 
Positive 30 is right here. It's this measurement. So think of this distance, but instead of going up, I need to go down, which means I need to stop, right? Tell me when to stop. This is where I need to stop. Now, is that on a 30 or a 45? It's on a 30. Okay, so I come down here. I know it's in quadrant 4. So quadrant 4. It's on a 30, which means take that sector and make it into like three equal pizza slices. Is it the top one or the bottom one that I want to do? So from the middle, go straight out. Do your arrow and then to this point. Pedro, raise your hand. Okay, so do me a favor right now. I'm just curious. Uh, one through four, it's a whole new concept to you, but one through four, how well do you feel like you understand it? Threes, fours, five? Diego, are you supposed to leave right now, today, or at some later point? Do you have to pick something up? They don't give me... You're not sure either? No. End of class? Okay. So Diego at the end of class put a registration. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to go on to this. Um, now I'm going to describe this using, let me grab a blank piece of paper here. Give me one second, please. Diego, I'm going to write it on the back of yours, okay? Cool. All right, so here's my circle. Wow, that's a pretty good circle, I must say myself. All right, here's my starting point, the center of my starting point. And I'm going to choose any random point here. Like, let's say it's this point right here, okay? There's my starting point. Starting point, and I want to get here. So I want you to tell me, I know there's one way to get there. It's here up to this point, and I'm going to tell you that's, I don't know, 70 degrees. I'm making that up right now. And I want to come up with a coterminal angle that's positive. Remember, positive means we go upward. There's an unlimited amount. We generally just say the first one, but here's how you get it. You ready? You pass it up one time. It's positive because I'm going upwards. I pass it by one time. Now tell me when I hit that circle, when I hit that point on the track again. Well, let's try it again. Okay, ready? So I pass it. It's positive because I'm going upwards. I pass it, and then tell me when I get to that point again. It's right there. Now if I need to describe that, Pedro, go stand up. If I need to describe that in terms of degrees, it's 70 plus one full revolution, which equals one full revolution is 360. So 360 plus 70, please do that on your calculator for me. Pedro, stand up. Just can't, I don't care. Find a place. You can't keep your eyes open. What is 360 plus 70? A little bit louder, please. So 430 degrees, that is your positive coterminal angle. Now, negative means we're going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to start here. Tell me when I get to that point. It is right there. Now, how do I get that? I take 360, and I'm going to subtract that degrees. 360 subtract 70 is 290. Now, what do I have to do to make our identified as going in the opposite direction from the starting point? There's your answer. Let's do another one together. I'm just going to make life easy. Let's practice this. Let's say my point was right here, and I said this was 100. Fernanda, how do I figure out an example of one positive coterminal angle? So, ready? Here's my starting point. I need to pass it once, and then anytime I pass it after that point, you tell me when to stop. Okay, ready? Now, how did I get there? 100 plus an additional revolution. 460. How did you get 460? Okay. Okay, grab a calculator, guys. Okay, Robert, you're going to answer this. And then I'm going to ask somebody else if Robert is correct or incorrect. Are you ready? Robert, watch the movement of this pen and tell me what this answer is. Ready? So ready to watch again. So here's my starting point. What is that degrees, Robert? Don't answer for him. I'm going to ask somebody else in just a second if he's correct. 
Do you agree or disagree, Ricardo? You agree. How did you get that? Okay, good job. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you understood how we got that. Okay, so, but to come up with just one, so remember there's there's unlimited amount of positive coterminal angles, since you can go around this track as many times as you want. Take 360 plus whatever the degree is. Now to get the negative, you're going to take 360, subtract it. So 360 subtract 100 would be, now why would 260 in a quiz tomorrow be wrong? We're going to start by doing just the degrees to get to catch on to this. Go to number five, please. Do you have to show work for this? Absolutely not. Remember, this is the new term, coterminal angle. Positive is going to be 360 plus a number. Negative is going to be 360 minus a number. If you can write that down right now, please. And we're going to write down the positive one first and then the negative. So 360 plus 50 is 410 degrees. And 360 minus 50 is 310 degrees. And since we're going to go in the opposite direction, it is negative. With your partner, I would like you to do 8, 7, and 10. 8, 7, and 10. And let's give you about a minute and a half. Working with your partner right now, 8, 7, 10. Should hear you talking. So let's talk about this one. Let's go get a different answer. Take 360 plus negative 30. Does anybody have questions about those for me? Okay, grab your calculator. We're going to get prepared for that quiz tomorrow. Are you ready? Okay, true or false statement. Please write down underneath here, because we haven't even learned about radians. Please write down, let's go with 160 degrees. Please write down 160 degrees. Okay, I want to know, is 1,230, is 1,230 degrees an example of a coterminal angle for 160 degrees? Got a partner in a calculator. Is 1,230, 1, 2, 3, 0, is that an example of a positive coterminal for this? Grab a calculator. You have 20 seconds to get an answer and be able to explain how did you get that answer. Go. 1,230. Down to 20, 20 seconds. Pedro, are you a little more awake? Can you have a seat next to Ben? Be a good partner, not a sleeper. All right. Who feels confident in the answer? They can say yes or no, and they can explain it quick. Robert went up. Then we have either one of these two in back. Hey, Robert, what is your answer? I said no. And how did you decide on no? That's a great way. So this is a great way. Is it close to it? Now, that's, that's wonderful. His thought process is wonderful. If I was going to slow down this thought process for somebody else, here's what I'd say. Take 160 and 
Uh, add 360. Okay, we're not up to that number. Add 360. We're not up to that number. Add 360. Hey, I've got past that number, and I'm not exactly on it. Doesn't work. Great job, Robert. Okay, you ready? Here's your next one. Let's go with a negative coterminal angle. Let's write down right now. Can you please write down for me uh, 115 degrees? 115 degrees. Um, and let, you know what? Let's make it a negative 115. Let's make this challenges. Negative 115. I want to know, is negative 835 an example of a coterminal angle? Is this an example of a negative? I need to rephrase this. Here's the given angle. I want to know if this is an example of a negative coterminal angle. With your partner, go. So somebody other than Robert tells me yes or no and how they came up with the answer. In three, two, and one. It's L. What did you get, yes or no? Yes. And how did you get yes? Okay, can everybody write this down? So I want to continue, continue to do revolutions of 360, but in the opposite direction. Subtract 360. Am I there yet? No. Subtract 360. Am I there yet? Yeah, you're right on that point. So this is an example of another one. Remember, there's an endless amount. This is just the first revolution in, in, to the left and right, basically, is when you go positive and negative. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same thing with radians. Please look down below. The only difference is with radians, I'm not going to be adding, I'm not going to be taking 360 plus the number or 360 minus. I'm going to be using 2 pi. So above this, please write 2 pi plus the number and 2 pi minus the number. Exact same concept, but now we're going to rely more on a calculator. So if you can grab your calculator, we're going to do number 11 together. Again, I'm only giving you one example of each right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to forget about the pi's at this point. Don't jump ahead. Type in 2. Forget about a pi. We're going to add this at the very end. We're going to go 2 plus. Now in parentheses, type 5 divided by 8. So 2 plus 5 divided by 8. Now we want to turn that into a nice fraction. Hit math, fraction, enter, enter. You end up with 21 over 8. So 21 over 8, and now attach the pi. So the same thing to find an example of a negative coterminal angle. I'm going to take 2, subtract, in parentheses, 5 eighths. 2, subtract, in parentheses, 5 eighths. Hit math fraction, enter, enter. And I end up with 11 over 8. So 11 pi over 8 still is not correct. I need to, right, I need to show that I'm going in the opposite direction. So it's a negative. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you're understanding. You're working with your partner right now to do the last three, 6, 9, and 12. Go. When you're done with each, check your answer with me, please. Great question. Okay, sons just sons just reminded me of something that I have not done. So let's look at number six. So we're going to forget about the pi and we're going to attach it at the very end. But when I forget about the pi, there's nothing on top. What exists there that you cannot see? One. So put a one there. So it's really like a negative one half or a positive one fourth. Do 
Giselle, your group? Okay. Good. Ben and Pedro, we're working together, okay? Jasmine, your group is okay? Okay. Ulysses, does your group need any help? Not Ulysses, excuse me. Isaiah, does your group need any help? We're good? Leslie? We're okay? Servando, tell me when your group is done, and we're going to get started. Go down to number 13 when you're done, please. Finish up. I'll give you a little extra time here. Do you want to check your answer? Sure. Sorry, Joseph. Better? Which number are you on right now, Joseph? 12. You're on 12. Okay. Okay. So for time purposes, I'm going to move forward. Can everybody look right now at 13 through 15? Please do not take time to do these. The only thing I want you to do is to draw the picture with me. Okay. Are you ready? We're going to start here. So as I do this, I'd like you to do the exact same thing. Um, I would like you to draw a line that looks similar to mine and then to do the following. Okay. Ready? One revolution, two revolutions, and stop at that line that I drew. From the starting point, two revolutions and then up to the line. Draw a little arrow here and I want you to write 70 degrees. Go on to number 14. Don't do anything right now. We're going to start here. Draw a little arrow right here, please. We're going to go backwards from the starting line. One revolution, two revolutions, and then keep going until you get to this line. In just this area, I'm going to tell you this opposite space right here that's not being taken up is 50 degrees in this part right here that I'm not using is 50 degrees. We're going to do these together in just a bit. Number 15. Draw this right 65 down below and we're going to go backwards until we get to this position. Does anybody need additional time to draw? Okay, go back right now to number 13. We want to identify the measure of the angle. So we're going to go through each one of these slowly. And you'll have the opportunity to practice for your homework. One revolution going upwards, there is 300. There's an additional 300. So I have 300, 300, and then now 70. Adding those together, 360, 360, and 70 gives you an answer of... 790. I'm trying to be tricky about 14 and 15 in a couple of ways. So the first way is I'm going backwards. So forget about the negatives until the very end. Okay, you ready? Here we go. So this is 360, one revolution. Then I do a second revolution. I'm right here right now. That's additional 360. Now here's half of a revolution, which is 180. Now here's the difficult part. I want to know this measurement and I know this part is 50. Well, in this quadrant, there's a total of 90 degrees. If this is 50, that leaves this width. Add those up, please. Sure. This, this quadrant is 90, because 90, 90, 90, 90. So if this is the 50 that I'm not using, then what is this that matters to me for this problem? It'd be 40 by subtracting. Added together, you end up with 940, but the trick is we went backwards, so it is negative. Okay, let's have you practice number 15 with those two concepts. Go ahead. So I'm going to go backwards. And now, I could explain this to you in, in multiple ways, but here's one way to think of this. What is this degrees right here? 90 and 90 is 180, right? And 180 and 90 is 
270, so I'm at 270. Now I need to add 270 because 90, 90, 90 is 270. I need to add 270 to whatever this is. I know this is 65, but I don't really care about that. So if this whole thing is 90, 90 subtract 65 is? So what is 270 plus 25? And we went the opposite direction, so it is negative. Can you please do thumbs up to the side or down based on your understanding of the last three? The third learning objective? Yeah. You can take 360 and subtract 65 and put a negative in front. I just was breaking it apart so people could see how I get to it. But yeah, more than one way. Look to the back, please. Now, just because of the length of the today and we're running out of time, if you could draw a line that breaks off this last learning objective. So we're going to stop after number 23 today. Okay, so we are going to go now from degrees to radians and radians to, to degrees. So if you could go back to this piece of paper, this is what it's going to be like. I would say 90 degrees, and I would want an answer of pi over 2. Or if I would say pi over 6, I'd want an answer of, okay, you guys understand the concept? But I'm going to choose points generally that are not these pretty 30s or 45s. So if I said to you 100, well, you know 100 is right here, but you don't know what it's equivalent to for a radian. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, here's how this works. You could choose any one of these as an example to use. We need an equivalent one. So let's have, let's have you choose Ulysses. I want you to choose one of these for me, but don't choose the starting point because um, the zero will throw things off. So choose any one that looks like the easiest point to use. Okay, do you guys agree that looks pretty easy? The reason I like it, does it have any fractions involved? Okay, so you could choose any one to use. That, and actually the books use the same thing because it has no fractions. So let's write that down right now. Let's go. 180 degrees is equivalent to pi. They're, they're equivalent. So you're given 150 degrees. You need a way, you need a way to cancel out the degrees in order to get in terms of radians. So to do that, we multiply by 1 over 1 because things cancel out here. If we put this on top of this, we know they're equal just in different measurements. So do I? Do you think I want degrees on top or degrees on the bottom if degrees are going to cancel? On the bottom. So let's write 180 degrees and pi on top. Now the degrees on top cancels with the degrees on the bottom. I'm left with the pi, and that's why I'm already helping you out here. The pi is already there. Grab your calculator. Take 150 divided by 180, hit math fraction, enter, enter, and that's going to give you this reduced fraction, and it's equivalent to 5, 6 pi done. Okay, let's go on right now and do, uh, let's go down to number 19, please. So I'm given degrees, so I write 310 degrees. Now I want to eliminate the degrees, so I multiply by degrees on the bottom, so the degrees cancel, and then pi goes on top. Now why is pi with 180? Because they're equivalent. You find them on the same place along the unit circle. Degrees cancel. Take 310 and divide it by 180. Hit math, fraction, enter, enter. And it's equivalent to 31 over 18 with the pi there. Now, I make it easy by attaching the pi, but remember, you're going to have to do that on your own uh, when it comes to a quiz. I would like you to do number 23. Go. Correct answer, Diego, is? Nice job. 11 over 18 pi. Go up to number 21. And um, a couple different ways to do this, because there's a couple different ways that we can do it. We can leave it in terms of negative. That's fine as well. Let's do that. Let's leave it in terms of negative. So type into the exact same way using a negative. And the answer, Fernanda, is? Negative one-third. Do you need the negative there? Yes, you do. You need the negative, okay? Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing, but now we're going to do it, hey, if we have a radian, how do I go to degrees? So let's write down 1 pi over 10. 1 pi over 10. 
This is what I'm given. Now when we multiply it, you want to eliminate, you want to eliminate the pi. So should the pi be on top or the bottom? So put pi in the bottom and 180 on top. And we're going to use our calculator to make this easy, okay? So don't do too much work. Cancel out the pies. Grab your calculator. In parentheses, type in 1 tenth and take it times 180. If we'd happen to have a decimal, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So 18 degrees. Let's do the next one. So I have 13 pi over 3. We want to eliminate the pi, so I'm going to take it times 180 degrees over pi. The pi's will cancel. And then in parentheses again, I'm going to take 13 divided by 3 times 180 and 780 degrees. Please do number 20 and round to the nearest tenth. with this. Can anybody else look up here and see if you also have the same thing? Do you have negative three or 630 degrees? Yes. Okay. Let's go over what you need to memorize.